In the annals of human history, tales of time travel and space exploration have captured our imagination. Imagine a scenario where these two extraordinary concepts intertwine, leading to a captivating narrative of a time traveler selected for a secret mission to Mars. However, something different about this story is the fact that the individual in question returned with evidence, and this came in the form of a photograph that was taken on Mars. This man detailed that he was in the military for over 25 years and holds the rank of general. He referred to himself as Mr. Hayes and detailed that he was chosen for a secret space mission to Mars, a journey that would transcend the boundaries of time and plunge him into the depths of Martian history. Armed with state-of-the-art technology, he would witness the past of the Red Planet, observe its ancient civilizations, and unearth the enigmatic secrets that lay hidden beneath its rust-colored sands. He detailed that he doesn't have any family or children, and said that dedicated himself to the United States military. This mission piqued his interest, and so he accepted. After several months, he was taken to an unknown location, stating that the truck had been completely blacked out. When he entered this underground base, he said that he witnessed phenomena such as anti-gravity vehicles. Additionally, he mentioned that the group was assigned the name of the Mars Defense Force. The general stood in the heart of a military research facility. The temporal rift opened before him. A convergence of swirling lights and energy consumed him, and in the blink of an eye, he found himself on unfamiliar ground. The red sands of Mars stretched beneath his feet, the crimson sky a stark contrast to the earth he had left behind. Once transported, he stated that the sensation was unlike anything he had ever experienced, a convergence of lights, colors, and emotions that defied description. The general proceeded to state that the military provides training for specific individuals at a young age through various programs. It is worth noting that he is not the only person to make such claims about the US government's involvement in these activities. Other individuals have come forward and admitted their participation in classified programs, recounting their recruitment at an early stage of their lives. According to Mr. Hayes, he was subjected to an implantation of a device in his brain, which he claims also happened to over 200 other individuals. As he surveyed the Martian landscape, the realization hit him. He had been transported to a future where humanity had conquered the cosmos, establishing colonies on the Red Planet. Mars, once a distant dream, had become a second home for Earth's descendants. But it was not just the Martian landscape that had changed. Advanced domed cities dotted the horizon, bustling with life, innovation, and the echoes of progress. The general's military instincts kicked in as he observed the orderly formations of soldiers clad in sleek Martian uniforms. The sight was both awe-inspiring and unsettling. The general's instincts kicked in, and he found himself working alongside Martian military leaders to devise a plan to protect the city and its residents. As the dust storm raged, the general's military expertise combined with Martian ingenuity. They deployed advanced technology, harnessed the planet's resources, and coordinated the efforts of the Martian defense forces. The result was a battle against the forces of nature itself, a collective endeavor that showcased the strength of human determination. When the storm subsided, the city was intact, its citizens safe within their protective domes. The general stood amidst the Martian leaders, his gaze fixed on the horizon. He realized that his journey across time had not only given him a glimpse into Mars's future, but had also allowed him to contribute to its resilience and survival. As the temporal rift opened once again, he stood at the precipice of a choice. He could return to his own time, armed with the knowledge of Mars's bright future, or he could remain in this new world he had helped shape. He chose to return capturing a photograph of one of the outpost buildings. The general stated that he emerged from the rift with a renewed sense of purpose. He knew that the future he had witnessed was not an unattainable dream, but a potential reality within humanity's grasp. Armed with the knowledge of Mars's triumphant colonization, he became an advocate for international cooperation, space exploration, and the unity that had transformed a distant planet into a second home. Throughout history, humanity has been captivated by the concept of time travel, 
an idea that transcends the limits of our reality and delves into the realms of the unknown. While the idea has been a staple of science fiction, the question of whether time travel is possible remains one of the most intriguing and debated topics in the realm of physics and philosophy. The concept of time travel finds its roots in the theory of relativity, formulated by Albert Einstein. According to this theory, time is not an absolute entity, but is intertwined with space, forming a fabric known as space-time. This fabric can be warped and bent by massive objects, leading to phenomena like gravitational time dilation, where time flows differently depending on the strength of the gravitational field. Theoretical physics suggests that wormholes, hypothetical shortcuts through space-time, could potentially allow for time travel. These tunnels, however, are governed by complex equations and require the existence of exotic matter with negative energy density, a concept that challenges our current understanding of physics. Einstein's theory of relativity predicts that time dilation occurs when an object approaches the speed of light. As a result, a traveler moving at relativistic speeds would experience time differently compared to an observer at rest. While this phenomenon is not the same as traditional time travel, it demonstrates the malleability of time as described by the theory of relativity. Theoretical models suggest that certain solutions to Einstein's equations, known as closed time-like curves, could potentially allow for time travel. These pathways through space-time loop back onto themselves, theoretically permitting a person to revisit their own past. However, the mathematical consistency of these solutions and their practical realization remain subjects of intense scrutiny. In the realm of quantum mechanics, particles can become entangled, sharing a connection that transcends physical distance. Some physicists have proposed that exploiting the phenomenon of quantum entanglement could potentially enable communication or information transfer across time. Yet, the complexities of quantum mechanics and the delicate nature of entanglement make this proposition far from straightforward. Time travel not only challenges the laws of physics, but also prompts philosophical questions about causality, free will, and the nature of reality. The possibility of altering the past raises questions about the deterministic nature of the universe and the potential for paradoxes that undermine our understanding of cause and effect. Time travel introduces the notion of feedback loops, where events in the past could be influenced by future actions, creating a cycle of cause and effect that defies linear time. While these loops may offer fascinating narrative possibilities, they also present logical conundrums that challenge our intuition. Some theories within the realm of quantum mechanics propose the existence of multiple parallel universes. These multiverse theories suggest that time travel could potentially involve traversing between different branches of reality, sidestepping some of the paradoxes associated with traditional time travel scenarios. In the end, the question of whether time travel is possible remains shrouded in uncertainty. While the theoretical foundations exist within the framework of modern physics, the practical realization of time travel is fraught with challenges paradoxes and limitations that are yet to be overcome. This strange footage has just been uploaded to social media, showing what appears to be a laser beam setting a small area of the ground on fire. The footage was sent to us from someone who lives in Chile and said that a beam of energy could be seen coming from the sky. Oddly enough, this isn't the first time that something like this has been captured on camera and it's caused various people to put forward their theories as to what this could be. One idea that was put forward was that this was an energy beam and could have come from a military aircraft. Although this sounds like something from a movie, the United States Department of Defense spends over a billion dollars annually on developing directed energy or concentrated electromagnetic energy weapons. Those who live in the area said that whatever created this beam of energy must have been extremely powerful as when residents went to the area where the beam hit, it was revealed that there was a hole in the ground. Directed energy weapons have long been a topic of interest and speculation in the realm of military technology. These advanced weapons systems, which harness and direct concentrated energy beams, have the potential to revolutionize warfare and reshape the dynamics of conflict. The Pacific Fleet of the US Navy has recently announced that it has successfully conducted a test on a new high-energy laser weapon 
that has the capacity to take down aircraft mid-flight. According to a statement released by the Navy, the USS Portland, an amphibious transport dock ship, has successfully utilized a high-energy class solid-state laser system to disable an aerial drone aircraft. The Navy has provided images and videos showcasing this system-level implementation. The visuals depict a laser emitting from the surface of a military vessel. Brief video excerpts illustrate an object, presumably a drone, catching fire. The Navy conducted a test of the laser weapon system demonstrator in the Pacific, but the specific location was not disclosed. According to a report from 2018 by the International Institute for Strategic Studies, the specific strength of the weapon was not disclosed. However, it was speculated that the laser could reach up to 150 kilowatts. According to the commanding officer of Portland, Captain Carrie Sanders, performing tests at sea against unmanned aerial vehicles and small boats, will provide us with important insights into the capabilities of the solid-state laser weapons system demonstrator against potential threats. The captain said that they are revolutionizing naval warfare for the Navy with this cutting-edge technology. The US Navy claims that directed energy weapons, referred to as lasers, are a viable defense against small boats or unmanned aerial vehicles, also known as drones. According to the statement, the Navy's utilization of directed energy weapons brings about immediate advantages to the combatants and empowers the commander to have more flexibility in making decisions and responding. Currently, the Department of Defense is working on directed energy weapons to combat various threats such as missiles and unmanned aerial vehicles. The Department of Defense and military departments are currently engaged in projects aimed at creating directed energy weaponry. These initiatives have included the development of various prototypes and demonstrators of laser weapon systems that have been successfully utilized in live fire demonstrations to bring down drones. The Department of Defense and the military branches are currently designing more advanced laser weaponry to combat larger threats. They are also creating various high-power microwave capabilities that can be used for engaging in missile or drone swarm attacks against military bases. In order for a military department to successfully transition prototypes to an existing or new acquisition program, it must find a partner to support the technology's further development. The Army has created a detailed plan that outlines the roles of stakeholders and schedules for the building of supporting activities. Although the Navy has successfully fielded multiple directed energy weapon prototypes and identified potential transition partners, they lack documented transition agreements. Meanwhile, the Air Force has not prioritized the establishment of transition partners, making future planning even more difficult. Failure to take these transition planning steps can result in misaligned directed energy weapons that may not meet operational needs and put both the Navy and Air Force at risk. Directed energy weapons encompass a range of technologies that generate and focus various types of energy, such as lasers, microwaves, or particle beams, to damage or destroy targets. Unlike traditional kinetic weapons, which rely on projectiles or explosives, Directed energy weapons rely on the transfer of energy to disable or neutralize threats. The energy beams emitted by these weapons can be precisely aimed and controlled, offering advantages in terms of accuracy, speed, and potentially reduced collateral damage. One of the key advantages of directed energy weapons is their speed of engagement. The high velocity of energy beams allows for near-instantaneous target acquisition and engagement, enabling rapid responses to incoming threats. This can be particularly valuable in scenarios where time is critical, such as in intercepting missiles or drones. Additionally, directed energy weapons offer extended operational capabilities. Unlike conventional weapons, which require ammunition resupply, directed energy weapons can operate as long as there is sufficient power supply. This reduces the logistical burden and potential risks associated with transporting and storing ammunition. Another significant advantage of directed energy weapons is their potential for precise targeting. The focused nature of the energy beams allows for selective engagement, minimizing collateral damage and reducing the risk to civilians and infrastructure. This accuracy can be especially valuable in urban warfare or situations where targets are located in close proximity to non-combatants. Moreover, directed energy weapons have the potential to overcome certain limitations of conventional weaponry. For example, 
They can counter hypersonic missiles, which pose significant challenges to traditional defense systems due to their extreme speed and maneuverability. Directed energy weapons can track and engage such targets with greater agility and responsiveness. However, the development and deployment of directed energy weapons also raise important ethical considerations. The potential lethality and range of directed energy weapons may present challenges in distinguishing between combatants and non-combatants, raising concerns about the risk of unintended casualties and violations of international humanitarian law. Additionally, the long-term effects of directed energy beams on human health and the environment require careful evaluation. Another consideration is the potential for escalation and arms race dynamics. The deployment of advanced directed energy weapons could lead to a race for more powerful and sophisticated systems, increasing the risk of military confrontation and destabilizing the balance of power between nations. Furthermore, the effective use of directed energy weapons relies on robust and secure command, control, and communication systems. Cybersecurity concerns must be addressed to prevent unauthorized access or malicious manipulation of these weapons, which could have devastating consequences if exploited. As of right now, directed energy weapons represent a significant advancement in military technology with the potential to transform warfare. Their speed, accuracy, extended operational capabilities, and potential to overcome certain limitations of conventional weapons make them attractive options for defense and security purposes. However, ethical considerations, including the risk of unintended casualties, potential long-term effects, and the risk of escalation, must be carefully evaluated and addressed. As with any new technological development, the responsible and accountable use of directed energy weapons is paramount to ensure their potential benefits are realized while minimizing potential risks and harms. The International Space Station orbits the Earth, serving as a beacon of scientific exploration and international collaboration. However, alongside its remarkable achievements, the International Space Station has also become the focal point of intriguing reports and recordings of unidentified objects. Recently, some interesting photographs have been shared around social media, showing what appears to be two medium-sized black cubes flying past one of the International Space Station's cameras. As the live feed camera transmitted images of the Earth and surrounding space, a user online noticed two small, dark objects in the distance. They said that its shape and movements deviated from the expected patterns of space debris or known satellites. Intrigued, they started to take some screenshots in the hopes of better understanding what it was that they witnessed. They said that the objects were in the shape of a cube, saying that it maneuvered gracefully through the vast emptiness of space. The user said that it flew past the camera within a matter of seconds and displayed agility and speed beyond the capabilities of any known human-made spacecraft. With the mysterious object captivating their attention, they knew that they were witnessing something strange and so quickly grabbed some screenshots. They said that the object's flight patterns and advanced maneuvers challenged conventional understanding, raising questions about its technological capabilities and potential nature. After sharing the photographs online, some suggested that the small black objects were advanced reconnaissance probes from an advanced civilization observing humanity's activities from afar. Others theorized that it could be a result of a top-secret military experiment, pushing the boundaries of aerospace technology. Regardless of the explanations, the sighting opened up a world of possibilities and triggered discussions about the existence of intelligent life beyond Earth. However, Despite numerous attempts at trying to explain what these objects were, they remained a mystery. Interestingly, those who saw the photograph said that this isn't the first time that these objects have been captured on the International Space Station's live cameras and said that over the years, a variety of strange objects have been captured. Although NASA and other space agencies have said that these objects are nothing of interest and can normally be explained as things like space debris and camera glitches, this hasn't stopped users from investigating further noting that every so often these objects can be seen during the live streams. Whether these two small black objects were an otherworldly visitor, a product of advanced human technology, or something else entirely, its presence has left many unanswered questions, and as humanity continues its voyage of discovery, the enigmatic encounter serves as a constant reminder that the universe is full of surprises, 
waiting to be discovered. As mentioned, numerous recordings from the International Space Station have captured objects appearing in the frame, exhibiting unconventional flight patterns and unexplained characteristics. Eyewitness accounts and footage reveal sightings of spherical, cylindrical or disc-shaped objects maneuvering near the space station. These objects often exhibit high speeds, abrupt changes in direction, and anomalous behavior that cannot be easily explained by known space debris or natural phenomena. Several explanations have been proposed to account for the mysterious objects caught near the International Space Station. One possibility is the presence of space debris or satellites, which can occasionally pass by the station. However, the distinct flight patterns and behaviors observed in some cases defy the characteristics of typical space debris or known satellite movements. Another explanation involves misidentifications or lens flares caused by light reflections or internal optics within the cameras. Such optical phenomena can create the illusion of objects or anomalies in the recorded footage. However, the consistency of witness reports and the corroboration between different camera angles challenge the notion that all sightings are mere artifacts. The sightings of these mysterious objects have fueled speculation about potential advanced civilizations. Proponents of this hypothesis argue that the peculiar flight patterns and advanced technology displayed by these objects suggest the presence of intelligent life monitoring our planet or interacting with the space station. While this hypothesis is intriguing, it remains speculative, as definitive proof of advanced activity is yet to be established. The complex nature of this phenomenon requires rigorous scientific investigation and analysis of available evidence to ascertain the true nature of these sightings. The realm of outer space has always been shrouded in mystery, and astronauts, as intrepid explorers, are no strangers to encounters with the unknown. Several astronauts have come forward with accounts of mysterious aircrafts. Those who believe in this phenomenon have said that if you are going to believe anyone, then you should believe those who've actually been to space. Perhaps the most notable is the testimony of Buzz Aldrin, the second person to walk on the moon. Aldrin has stated that he and his fellow Apollo 11 crew members observed a mysterious object during their journey to the moon, describing it as a cylindrical object moving alongside their spacecraft. Similarly, Edgar Mitchell, the sixth person to walk on the moon as part of the Apollo 14 mission, spoke openly about his belief in advanced life and his conviction that mysterious objects have visited Earth. Mitchell claimed that multiple astronauts have witnessed these objects, but the information has been withheld from the public. In addition to these renowned astronauts, other space explorers, including Gordon Cooper and Story Musgrave, have shared their own encounters with unidentified objects during their missions. Their descriptions often include sightings of bright lights, strange formations, or objects exhibiting rapid acceleration and maneuverability. The testimonies of astronauts hold considerable weight due to their extensive training, scientific backgrounds and credibility within the space exploration community. These individuals are trained observers who have undergone rigorous astronaut selection processes and have extensive knowledge of spacecraft and celestial phenomena. The testimonies of astronauts who claim to have encountered mysterious objects during their space missions provide intriguing insights into the unexplained phenomena that occur beyond our planet. While skeptics offer alternative explanations and caution against misinterpretations, the credibility and training of these astronauts demand careful consideration. The experiences shared by these space explorers encourage scientific inquiry, inspire curiosity, and challenge our understanding of the universe. As we continue to explore the cosmos, further research and investigation into these encounters will shed light on the nature of these objects and potentially reshape our understanding of our place in the universe. Chernobyl wolves could be spreading mutations in Europe. The 1986 Chernobyl disaster left its mark on our history books, though its impact in our present remains somewhat unknown. In the explosion of the reactor itself, two engineers lost their lives. It was then in the emergency response that further injuries were acquired, with 237 people who were working at the time being hospitalized, 28 of whom passed away within the next three months. Additional fatalities that occurred from those impacted didn't seem to be linked to radiation particularly. But that does not mean that there is no need for concern. 
In truth, we know very little about how the Chernobyl disaster will impact the public and general population. Exposure-related fatalities are difficult to determine with precision, and so the true effect this disaster has had remains uncertain. It has been noted that there has been an increase in childhood thyroid cancer in 2011, with a possible correlation being hypothesized between the two. Research into the effects of radiation exposure long-term is ongoing. After the disaster to limit the detrimental impact of radiation, the USSR built the Chernobyl nuclear power plant sarcophagus. This is a large steel and concrete structure that covers the nuclear reactor that had seen the disaster, namely nuclear reactor number 4. By building the sarcophagus, the hope was that the most dangerous aspect of the disaster would remain largely contained, limiting the possibility of radioactive contamination. Furthermore, this sits within a larger zone that is highly restricted, known as the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone, often known as the 30km zone, which prohibits people from entering this unsafe area. While we humans are not likely to forget the horrific event and can heed the warnings regarding the dangers of radiation and those of radiation contamination, the same cannot be said for the wildlife in the surrounding area. In the north of Ukraine, where the site of Chernobyl sits, there are several European grey wolves, alongside other rather large species, who call the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone their home. While no people occupy this space anymore, just like us, animals can experience severe and long-term health issues from radiation. We are yet to conclude the degree to which radiation can cause mutations throughout species. A 2018 experiment saw researchers monitor the activity of 13 of these wolves, using collars with the ability to measure their radiation exposure. Predictably, the animals saw an increase in radiation when passing through areas that we knew to be zones of high contamination. What was a little more surprising was that one of the wolves managed to wander 250 miles out of the contaminated region, eventually making their way back to Russia. Jim Beasley, a wildlife ecologist, Based at the University of Georgia and the leader of the study, which was published in the European Journal of Wildlife Research, mentioned that this was the first time we have recorded long-distance wolf migration from the Chernobyl exclusion zone and outwards into the surrounding areas. He continued to explain that male wolves of about this age traveling great distances is something that we can expect, since this is common mating behavior though it does provide to us evidence that there are significant animal populations within the area impacted by the Chernobyl disaster. With there being a high number of wolves existing within the region, it falls in line with our expectations to see these creatures exploring further, looking to establish themselves elsewhere. Michael Byrne, a researcher of animal movement and ecology at the University of Missouri said, you'd expect that as a population of any animal, once it gets to a certain level, can only hold so many, so young animals will disperse. Studies that have previously been conducted revealed that the exposure to the radiation has the ability to cause mutations and other health hazards, though this research was primarily focused upon smaller creatures such as birds, rodents and insects. These studies have revealed that an animal's movements do have the capability to spread radioactive contaminants through their movements. We don't have a definitive idea as to whether this same information is applicable to animals such as wolves. It's definitely a plausible outcome. Some of the mutations that have been observed in creatures exposed thus far have included tumors, cataracts, smaller brain sizes, and some developmental differences and abnormalities. Regarding this specific study, it's worth noting that these harmful mutations likely would limit the movement of a wolf and so one able to travel great distances is not as likely to have been impacted by the radiation levels in too extreme of a manner. Overall, the truth is that there is a lot of mystery left to be uncovered here. 168 Mysterious Nazca Geoglyphs in the Desert Sands of Peru A recent discovery revealed 168 geoglyphs in the sands of the Nazca Desert, Peru, in an area known as the Nazca Lines. The geoglyphs were interpreted by researchers at the Yamagata University of Japan and showcased several snakes, felines, birds, killer whales, humans, and camelids. The geoglyphs are pictographic, 
One of the human geoglyphs resembles a cartoon-like drawing of a person with large unrealistic eyes and what archaeologists think is supposed to be a beard or stubble on the face. So far, archaeologists believe these geoglyphs are dated somewhere between 100 BC and 300 AD, but there is still some uncertainty to be had since some researchers believe the Nazca lines can be dated back all the way to 400 BC. Yamagata University published the photographs they took of the geoglyphs, some edited to highlight the original lines, which otherwise are difficult to see due to centuries of the glyphs gradually deteriorating. The IBM Thomas J. Watson Research Center of New York worked in tandem with Yamagata University. The two organizations utilized artificial intelligence to scan the site of the geoglyphs in hopes that the AI would recognize the markings better and more clearly. Things that researchers worried they might have overlooked or missed. Yamagata University publicly stated, by using the newly discovered geoglyphs for AI analysis, Yamagata University aims to clarify the distribution patterns of the geoglyphs. The results of this research will also be used for geoglyph conservation activities. The Yamagata research took place in the period between June 2019 and February 2020. These 168 geoglyphs are far from the only ones located in the area of the Nazca Lines. The entire site is full of glyphs of all kinds. Every one of these geoglyphs follows a pictorial pattern and was created on the Peruvian desert floor. The towns of Nazca and Palpa are included in landmarks and are considered to be one of UNESCO's World Heritage Sites. The Nazca Lines span 400 kilometers. In the past, archaeologists discovered that at the end of the Nazca Lines were wooden snakes dug into the ground. These snakes proved to researchers that the people living in the basin used basic tools to create the geoglyphs. All the geoglyphs are composed of simplistic shapes, but that doesn't take away from their beauty. Alongside those recently discovered, other geoglyphs have been found representing hummingbirds, monkeys, spiders, mythical creatures, and dogs. It's thought that the Nazca lines were made by taking out dark pebbles from the sand surface and revealing the white sand beneath it in creating these shapes. With the discovery of brand new geoglyphs, the total number of found icons is 358, but experts state that they believe several hundred are still out there to be discovered. Peruvian archaeologist Luis Jaime Castillo has openly commented that he thinks only 5% of the Nazca lines have been uncovered. It's tricky to see their full designs unless one is on high ground looking down at the marbles. The Nazca lines were initially found in 1939 when a pilot flew overhead, but it's believed the surrounding locals witnessed their beauty long before from the heights of the hilltops. The reasoning behind their existence remains undetermined. Some archaeologists argue that it was supposed to serve an observatory purpose and work somewhat like a sundial, though other researchers believe that they were simply works of art. For now, it remains a debate. One of the oldest stars in the galaxy has a planet. Our universe took a lot of evolving and developing to get where it is today so it is somewhat strange when we find aspects that we know are not that old existing in the early days of the universe. In the early universe, we simply did not have all the scientific elements that we have today. The elements needed to form rocky planets did not exist, yet despite this, astronomers have found right here in the Milky Way galaxy a rocky planet dating back further than you would expect. A little bit of an astronomical timeline is needed here to form this picture. The Big Bang took place, resulting in an abundance of the light elements in the universe – hydrogen, helium, and a smaller amount of lithium. About 200 million years following the Big Bang, stars began to form, and along with them, heavier elements developed in the cores of stars, including carbon, oxygen, and iron. Now, for rocky planets to form, we need those materials from the cores of stars, so we should not be able to find rocky planets in the early days of the universe. These planets should, instead, be gaseous like Jupiter. There is one planet that is being looked at in this study. It has been found orbiting TOI 561, a star that is an approximate 10 billion years old and is one of the oldest in our galaxy. This planet was found through the Transiting Exoplanet Survey satellite and then observed more closely using the Keck telescope. This star is part of the galactic thick disk, 
an area of the galaxy made almost exclusively out of ancient stars, giving it a unique chemical composition. The stars in the so-called thick disk are much less metallic than in the thin disk, adding even more surprise to the discovery that it is indeed a rocky planet orbiting the star. The planet named TOI 561b was first found when it moved in front of the star it orbits. This process stopped the shine of the star for a moment, meaning the light dipped and Tess could see the planet lurking just in front of the star. After this, the next step was to gather information on the planet. Not only is it rocky, but it has a mass three times that of the Earth's, adding more evidence to the belief that this is a rocky planet, not a gaseous one. TOI 561b is not the only planet to orbit this old star, though, but the other two are confirmed to be gaseous, not rocky. It might take some time to continue this research and unravel this mystery, though it appears that something is different than how we currently understand it, whether that is the timeline of our universe, the composition of this planet, or the elements needed to form them. 34-meter tsunami may hit Indonesia in megaquake. We can anticipate and prepare for the inevitable earthquakes that are eventually likely to hit certain areas. This technology is continuing to evolve, and as of November 2022, there are some details that we are able to gather to a staggering specificity. It has been predicted that a tsunami reaching up to 34 meters in height could follow an earthquake of an 8.9 magnitude affecting the Java and Sumatra Indonesian islands. A research team has observed high levels of seismic activity along the coastal areas of these islands, indicating the possibility of a megathrust category earthquake. This was reported upon in the journal Natural Hazards, and whilst there was no timeline offered to the eventuality of this, it's understood that this is a somewhat inevitable event to occur. This has the potential to be comparable to that of the 2004 earthquake that left 180,000 people dead, having hit Sumatra. A disaster of this scale would be devastating no matter when it occurs. Though separate studies seem to indicate that an earthquake of this scale can be expected in this area every 500 years. The researchers were able to use data from several earthquakes that occurred between 2009 and 2020, to predict a magnitude of 4 or higher, along with an analysis of more than 1,000 epicenters for the potential tsunami. This inevitability is truly terrifying. We can only hope that increased awareness like this can help lead to further preparedness, in turn saving more lives. There are so many hardships that we face within our lives, and the advancement of technology is a double-edged sword. We can only hope that the continued development of science can be applied in beneficial ways.